Hey guys, we're going to be making a couple of quick layout changes and then we're going to be setting up subscriptions on our server and our front end. So right now you notice here our list of messages, but if you've seen Slack before, they kind of start at the bottom and they go up. Whereas right now we are starting at the top and going down. And then also if I were to like make this screen a little bit smaller and there's not enough room, there's a lot of messages. I have to scroll with the whole pane so you notice how I lose right here my uh, side panel. So the first thing we're going to do to fix this is we're wrapping this whole component. This is a message container. We're wrapping it in the messages component. So in our messages component here, we're going to just say, oops, flex or display flex. And then what this allows us to do is control the flex direction. And we can say column reverse. And now what will happen is instead of flowing from top to bottom, it'll go from bottom to top. See, so notice how we have extra space here now. Um, and then the next thing we wanted to change was in our inspect, if the window, see how the window we still have to go up. Now what we're gonna do is just say overflow and the Y in the Y direction and we're going to say auto. And what that does is it'll automatically add a scroll bar to this little component right here. So now if this gets a little bit smaller, notice how we still see the input bar here and what we're scrolling is we're scrolling up and only the messages are moving, not the whole panel. So cool. So those are the two layout changes I wanted to make. Now let's start setting up subscriptions. So we're going to be starting on the server first. Now they have a nice example of how to do this with Express, which is the exact server we're already using. So I'm gonna copy this, paste it in, and then change it for how we have stuff set up. So let's jump into this and get started. So I'm gonna paste this down here below. Now I'm just gonna get rid of some of the imports we already have. So we have Express and Body Parser already imported. Um, we have Apollo Server. We don't have HTTP. We don't have GraphQL. We don't have subscriptions or transport and we have a schema. So we already have these two installed. HTTP comes by default with Node.js. GraphQL we've installed, but we don't have GraphQL subscriptions and subscriptions to transport uh, WebSockets. So let's install those real quick. So I'm in the directory of my server and I'm gonna say yarn add GraphQL subscriptions. And then what was the name of the other one? Subscriptions dash transport slash Descriptions, dash transport, and then WebSocket. Um, we're already creating, we already have a port in the app. We already have our GraphQL endpoint. And I'm just gonna like move the imports up to the top with my other ones. Um, and we come back down here. Yeah, so I already have, we're not creating pub sub right now but we don't actually need PubSub to be created here. We're gonna be dealing with PubSub in a little bit. We do need to create our server though by doing it in this manner. So I'm gonna create my server right here. Notice how they do server.listen and then they put all their stuff. So our server is doing stuff here. So I'm just gonna delete what we have and add this. And there we go. And so we were on port 8081. And here we have execute, subscribe, and then in my schema, the schema that I have, I believe, I just called schema, yep, so we can just get rid of that and I'll grab it. And then server is our server here, and then path, that looks fine. And ESLint, all it doesn't like is we're using, um, it says no new here. Um, I'm just gonna disable that, so ESLint disable next line, given that rule. All right, so that is all we have to do on the back end to now have a server set up. Let's see if we get any errors. No errors, looks like it's up and running okay. Let's make sure our front end can still fetch data. Give us a refresh and cool enough it was able to. So we didn't break anything and now our server um, can do subscriptions. All we really did was, we don't need PubSub right now. We'll be using PubSub um, I'll leave it here for now because we're going to use it in a little bit. But we added this create server, execute, subscribe, and subscription server. 
in which we're using down here to basically just set up our server. So we're ex using our existing express server to create the server and then we're just doing server.listen and this is going to take our previous routes and use those while also using uh, setting up a subscription server and the path is slash subscription so we're going to have to keep that in mind when we set up our front end what our path is. Okay cool so now let's set up the front end. So for the front end they have a nice little walkthrough as well that we're going to follow. So we need to first set up a WebSocket link and then just kind of walk through splitting up the connection and I'll show you that. So we're going to copy this and come over here to our front end. Now this is going to be in our index we have our Apollo stuff but there's a lot going on here. So what I'm going to do is actually create a new folder or not a new folder but a new file called Apollo and just kind of create this stuff there. And I want to move up, move over my existing Apollo things over there as well. So Apollo link, we need to keep the Apollo provider here. So I'm going to put that at the bottom. But we don't need all these Apollo things here. I'm going to move them over here. So then in my index where we're creating a link, setting the context, creating the after link, all this junk, I want to move over to Apollo. And then, so in my index here, all I really want is to import the client. So say import client from Apollo. So now we're just gonna take that Apollo client and then pass it to the Apollo provider. So now this Apollo file is responsible for configuring everything, so let's do that. So we have duplicates right here, so Apollo link can also grab the split. We can get rid of that. Now, we're also missing a couple of these in our uh, package.json and Apollo link, create HTTP link, and HTTP link. So we have two of those. We only need one. There we go. So the Apollo link WebSockets and uh, Apollo utilities we don't need, or we do need to install with Yarn. So I'm going to come over here to my console and I'm going to CD into the folder. Just do a clear, do yarn add, Apollo link, and then GraphQL, or was it, I think it was Apollo Utilities, yep, Utilities, Utilities, so those will be added. So first thing, we're creating our link still, um, middleware we're creating, that looks all good. they're creating a link like this. Okay, so here's how they're doing theirs. So they're creating a link using the new link while as we're doing the create HTTP link. I don't really know the difference between the two. They look exactly the same, except we're using a different function basically. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. And we don't need to import it if we're not using it. Um, Uh, using the ability to split links you can send data so okay so we're basically splitting up our link here and we're creating our WebSocket link alright so here's the link that we created before and that's what we have we passed to our client so I'm gonna put that down here and this is where we're gonna export default this is a new new Apollo client so now this WebSocket link, now this guy right here is gonna be our HTTP link, and this is gonna be our WebSocket link. And do we have a name? Oh yeah, we're already using HTTP link, so um, HTTP link with middleware, we'll call it. And so we'll use that down here. So HTTP with link middleware. Okay, so we're creating our WebSocket link here, and then the URL, uh, localhost. Now for us, we said 8081, and if we head over to our server, see how we did dash subscriptions? We want to do that here as well. And then we're going to say reconnect, that's just a good option. And then here's this little split link, what's going on here? Well, now we have two kind of operations that are happening in our GraphQL. 
up to here, all this stuff here is what we used before, right? This is just creating our regular HTTP uh, link, which makes requests to our server. I just renamed this to HTTP link with middleware. But we're concatenating our afterware and our middleware, which we're using on every request. So now we also want to make WebSocket requests or with subscriptions. So we're creating this link, which doesn't need to run through all this middleware. So we have two of them now. And we need to know when to run our, our WebSocket one and when to run our link or our HTTP link that has the middleware. So to do this, um, we're, basically, we're basically creating a split a fork in the road where it just like an if statement choose which one and I actually don't even know what this git main definition is um, I'm assuming all it is is it's just looking at the query and seeing if it's a subscription query or if it's a mutation or a regular query and then checking so if it is a WebSocket or a subscription it comes to this WS link otherwise it goes to HTTP link so I assume that's what this is doing and then you've seen this before we're just exploring the link so looks like no errors happening over here refresh make sure everything loads okay everything loads good so we successfully added web sockets to our or not web sockets but subscriptions which use web sockets to our back-end server and our front end so then we're now capable of adding subscriptions to our schema so in the next video that's what we'll be doing is so now when I make a little message here and I say hello it should instantly pop up here because we're subscribed to all new messages so that's it for this video guys I'll be pushing all this code up to github so you can check it out and I'll see you in the next video